Today I'm going to show you how to make French rolls in your bread machine. This is such a great recipe for beginners. It is so simple and only has four ingredients. You'll only need bread flour, water, salt, and yeast, plus a little bit of cornmeal for sprinkling the bottom of your pan. I'm gonna teach you how to use your oven to create steam, and that gives your bread a really crisp crust and a really good rise. Rolls are a great way to get into baking bread because they always bake all the way through. You don't have to worry about a doughy center, and they rise much more quickly than a full loaf of bread. Another great thing about rolls is that they're versatile. I like to use some of these to serve with dinner, and then I'll freeze the rest and use them for sandwiches throughout the week. Let's get started. So you always want to add your ingredients in whatever order your bread machine manual specifies. Mine says liquids first, so I'm going to go ahead and put in one cup of my water, which is just part of the water I need, four cups of bread flour, two teaspoons of salt, two and a half teaspoons of yeast, and then I start the dough cycle. I know I'm gonna to need to add the rest of my water, so I go ahead and dump in the final half cup. Now what you wanna look for is to make sure all your dough is coming together. You don't want any dry bits in the corners. And once that dough ball has come together, go ahead and let it run its full 30 minute cycle of kneading. You don't need to stand there and watch, you can just walk away. When it's done kneading, it will switch off. It will heat up a little tiny bit and switch over to its rise cycle, which takes 60 minutes. And when it's done with that, we will come back because we don't need to deal with it until it's done with that full one and a half hour dough cycle. So it's still kneading. You can see how much smoother it is. And now look how much it has risen. So it's time to go ahead and shape our rolls. So we need to divide this dough into 10 equal portions. The best way to do this is to use a digital scale. I do not do that here because I'm not feeling particularly fussy. I simply divide it in half and then those halves I divide into five equal parts just roughly, I'm just eyeballing it. If I was doing this for some type of special occasion, I would use a scale. So I'm just using a really sharp knife. A serrated knife works well for this. And I'm relatively happy with the size of these dough balls. They look pretty much equal. Now it's time to shape them. So first I'm gonna prepare my baking pan. It's just a parchment lined baking sheet. I'm sprinkling it with cornmeal to give them just a little bit of extra non-stick power. When you shape a dough ball, you don't want to take it and mash into it like it's a ball of Play-Doh. You still have to be gentle. And what you want to do is pick it up and pinch the bottom of it. And that's going to allow the top to smooth out without you mashing it up too much. So I'm going to go ahead and do all 10 of these. So see how just by pinching the bottom, the top gets really smooth and then you just set them on your baking sheet. Try to arrange them in such a way that when they rise, they're not going to touch. It's not the end of the world if they do touch, but it's better if they don't. Now you can see that mine aren't perfectly even, but that's okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna sprinkle the tops with flour. This is just to give it a pretty rustic look. So you do a little pinch of flour on top of each one and then rub it in so that it sticks on. Again, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. It's just for looks, but it's easy and it's pretty. And now I'm going to slash them. You do want to slash them to keep them from blowing up in the oven, but it doesn't have to be fancy and you don't need a special tool. Just use that same sharp knife you used to divide your dough and give it a quick, either an X or just a plain slash like this. They now need to do a final rise. So it has to be covered, but you need something that's not going to stick to your rising dough. So either a damp tea towel, but I prefer to use heavily greased plastic wrap because it never sticks. Whereas sometimes if you get a really quick rise, a damp tea towel will stick to your dough. This has to sit in a warm place for about 45 minutes, but first I'm going to preheat my oven because I have to preheat to 450, which is going to take a while. Now check your oven. You're going to need two racks in one in the center and one just below it. On that lower rack, you need to put an empty baking sheet. That's going to hold your water that you're going to put in to create steam. That baking sheet has to be hot in order for the water to steam when you pour it in. So put it in now and then preheat the oven. So you can see these are going to start rising. You want them to be noticeably puffier. Like I said, about 45 minutes in a warm room, a little bit longer if your house is colder. Gently peel off your covering. You don't want them to deflate, which will happen. You can see that slash has really opened up. 
And now we are doing our steam. This is essential to this recipe. It's what gives it a crisp crust and a great rise. You can see how steamy that is. You want to do this as quickly as you can. I'm kind of taking too long. You want to get your rolls right in there, but they're still going to turn out fine. Set your oven for 15 minutes and ta-da! Aren't they beautiful? They rose up so much. I'm really happy with those. So I hope I've convinced you that making your own rolls at home is so easy with a bread machine. This recipe was only four ingredients and now you can stop buying overpriced stale rolls at the grocery store. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.